Well, thanks for taking my call. Um, I haven't uh, been listening a whole lot lately, so maybe some of this has already been addressed, and I apologize if it has, but I guess, you know, considering the shooting that happened the other week, I'm again wondering when Democrats and liberals are going to acknowledge the cognitive dissonance they seem to have between um, the gun control issue and the gun violence issue, because, um, you know, I don't mean to write off like mass shootings at all. I want them to stop as well, but I look at the numbers and it's like, mass shootings account for 0.2% of gun deaths. And I live in a neighborhood that, you know, there's always been shootings, but last summer was really bad. Um, There were a lot of times three shootings a day and most gun deaths are, you know, 60% are I think handguns, 60% are suicides. And I really think Democrats want to ignore the actual gun violence issue because if they addressed it, it means they would have to pay attention to one, uh, mental health care issues um, related to suicide and stuff like this, and two, uh, economic issues that contribute to handgun homicides in my neighborhood. Um, And it just seems kind of silly. I think I was reading a DiMaggio report from a couple years ago that stated even during the assault weapons ban in the 90s, um, they reduced mass uh, killings by 50%, but at a 0.2% uh, you know, mortality uh, level, that's 0.1. And so like, I wonder, like, all of the political energy, all of the money that goes into you know, limiting high-capacity magazines, um, what's it for? I mean, what, you know, if they don't start addressing um, the underlying issues that actually lead to, um, you know, gun deaths as well as trying to get a handle on gun control, it's just going to continue to be, um, you know, a flashpoint for bipartisanship and for, you know, Republicans portraying, uh, the left is trying to take our guns away and, you know, (laughs) usurp like power or something like that. It, So I guess, I don't know, what are your thoughts? Like, do you agree? Do you disagree? Like, do you see what I'm saying? Um, Has this been addressed recently? Has there been an interview I can go back to and like listen to or anything? I I, I think you're you're definitely right. Um, I don't think there's been an interview that you can listen to about this specifically. But look, I think the issue is the filibuster. (laughs) And someone like Joe Manchin in West Virginia, who's not even supportive of background checks. Um, I'm not even sure what his, I, I, I'm blanking on what his position is right now, although that can change um, in terms of uh, assault weapons bans. Let me look it up. Um, yeah, yeah, but I just want to say before while you're doing that, I mean, the caller is right that there is way too much Um, focus put on these sorts of cases and these sorts of high capacity bans that I mean, I, I think would not have a massive effect in stopping a lot of gun violence. Like I think we are a massively, massively gun soaked country. And what the caller said, like the mental health stuff and all of the actual care in the community um, needs to be done. And I personally would de-emphasize the types of gun control measures, especially the way they're stated, where it is just focusing on these sorts of, again, like things that I don't think people should be able to own. But it, I think it does become more of a partisan, almost like a fundraising slash email uh, gathering operation. Absolutely. I mean, that's, uh, that, that's it has been, I, I think, emotionally exploited by the Democratic Party, for which they've done absolutely nothing for it and refuse to get rid of the filibuster in order to even address it on the technocratic level. But if we're talking about the actual alienation and the harm that society is causing that leads to gun violence on a whole, not just mass shooting deaths, you're correct that the Democratic Party is not interested in currently having that conversation and won't be for a while. Right. They seem to only be interested in like when a mass shooting, they want people to be basically be able to shop and buy things freely, which, you know, everyone should be able to do, I guess. But it's only a problem when somebody goes into a shopping mall or into like a public place. It's not a problem when, you know, I'm in my bedroom at night worried about catching a stray. I mean, which would involve them, 
you know, providing jobs in the community, yeah. uh, bolstering education, like these kinds of measures that they're totally disinterested in. So I just, I wish that more pressure was put on that establishment to like, like as long as they're going to talk about gun control, that's fine. I mean, I'm a gun owner. I like to shoot and I honestly have dealt with some issues that um, make me feel like I need to carry one, but I'm also rational. Like I don't want mass shootings and I want gun violence to decrease. So as long as they're going to address that issue, I think we need to put more pressure on them to, to really talk about the issues that, that underlie uh, gun violence itself and to talk about, um, you know, handguns, which which massively outweigh like these these mass shootings are like such a minuscule, not to say that the deaths associated are unimportant at all. But like, honestly, like how much political energy and how much money is funneled into like limiting high capacity magazines that would do nothing for the issues I'm talking about here today. I, I think. Yeah. And it's it, just quickly, Matt, it's meant to an animate the new base of the Democratic Party that they've been trying to covet, which is like suburban moms. Yeah, I'm super suspicious of it, which is why I, I like gun control is not a political priority for me because I distrust like the Bloomberg uh, Bl Borg that is, I think, using it in a way that I think one is massively unhelpful just politically, nationally. Um, and two, yeah, as we're, we've said, like doesn't actually address the underlying issue of, you know, gun violence in this country and which can only be addressed or which should, I think, best be addressed by measures that need to be done anyway, like addressing mental health and poverty and those sorts of issues of deprivation and want and not by just saying, and, and look, if you can get, if you can pass legislation about background checks or whatever, fine. But I don't think I, I wouldn't make it a campaign issue. I don't think it should be like the reason I think in terms of like fill, getting rid of the filibuster, I don't want gun guns to come up the first thing out of people's mouth, the Democrats mouths. I want it to be about the pro act and about HR one like voting. And I, I don't want it to be about so we can take something away from you. Cause I just think that's, that's a, it's a, it's just objectively a managerial stance and that's not my politics. I, I understand that certain, management has to take place in a uh, republic and that like you know like, again like background checks and and if you can ban these high capacity stuff whatever like fine but again like do it under the dark of night if you can like it's the idea that this is something to win elect run elections on i think is i think it's proven uh, not successful I, I don't and i don't think it was that big of an issue in the last campaign um and they're not saying that that's why there was success but um appreciate the call nick thank you yeah have a good one you too um so uh el elemento says handguns are the source of the vast majority of gun violence it's true and democrats laser focus on my beloved assault weapons matt doesn't believe we should be able to own assault weapons i thought he was the furthest left now. Oh, well, I still love him. Not sure what that means, and I don't think that that's what... No. I mean, I, I'm open to the idea... Look, I, I think gun control in this country uh, has a bad history that um, goes after, like, black people often, right? Like, I, and I think that's what would happen. Like, that's what always happens, right? Like, who are the people that get busted with gun charges just growing up in pop culture? It's always like sport. It's always like athletes and rappers and stuff, right? It's black people. In other words, it's never like politicians carried it into Congress or whatever. Um, and so I, I, I am again, like not gun control is not in my politics. It's not something I emphasize. And I, I personally, uh, well, I, uh, yeah it's I, don't i'm not a gun control i don't know how you got that yeah I, yeah i i um i also i did an interview for ring of fire last week on um the basically mass and carceral element of the violence against women act and how it had really negative effects in many ways on um on women of color specifically and how it kind of militarized violence against women, which originated from some of the left wing movements coming out of the 60s and 70s and, and, and in, injected law enforcement into it. And you just have to when you're taking that managerial approach to basically some uh, law enforcement and enforcing gun ownership in that way, you have to worry that it's not uh, implemented in a racist uh 
incarceration based way that is punitive and um, not helpful for those underlying elements of society that were that the call. Yeah. The punitive approach I would take would be to nationalize all the gun industries. And uh, if you're going to buy a gun, you're going to buy it from the government. And um, I don't know if that should be allowed. Uh, we'll see. I think like, I frankly do think that there is a deterrent effect. I don't think people should have any um, uh, illusions about, you know, buying a gun, whether it's for a revolution or for, um, for even self-defense, because I think just statistically the chance that, you uh, accidentally do something is more likely than either of the uh, things, the, the good uses for it. Um, but I do think like there is something to be said about community deterrence. And if uh, like the Black Panthers, for instance, if you watch them, they're all very, very disciplined in terms of muzzle control and gun safety. And I think that is something that an oppressive uh, police force, for instance, take seriously so um uh i i i like i i i guess i i'm not uh cut and dried on this um i i don't think people should go get guns but i also think um it's worth it might be worthwhile to become familiar with safety around them